Welcome back to Tech Yes City, and today we have an undervolting tutorial on RX 6000 series graphics cards. Now, in my opinion, in 2022, you should forget about overclocking. I think the days of overclocking are numbered mainly because power is going through the roof worldwide, the costs of power are going up, but also out of the box, AMD, Intel, Nvidia, a lot of these companies are pushing their products to the brink. And in fact, with the RX 6000 series graphics cards, they're pushing them so far to the limit that undervolting them, and that's essentially lowering the clock speeds a little bit, dropping the voltage down, saves you significant amounts of power. Now, the benefits of this, of course, in the long run, especially if you're gaming a few hours a day, you're gonna be saving money in the wallet, but also extending the life of your parts, which is a big thing for me, especially since a lot of these parts nowadays cost quite a significant sum of money. So let's get into this overclocking tutorial, starting with two crucial programs that you're going to need. One of those is installed when you install your drivers. That's the AMD software, the Adrenaline Edition. If you just go for the typical recommended install, it's going to give you this, which also has a heap of options in it to do everything you need. Then the next program we've got here is Unigine Heaven. I'll put the links for these both in the description below for you guys. But essentially with Heaven, is it's an older benchmark, but it's so quick. It's so easy to open up. It just saves a lot of time. And also when things crash, I find they just do like a driver crash, which hopefully we'll show you in today's tutorial where you can quickly get back to undervolting if you've locked in relatively bad settings. So first things first, let's get into this. We'll open up the AMD software here, the Adrenaline uh, Edition software, make that full screen. And what we wanna go is to the performance tab right here. So this is the first thing, left click on that performance tab and we're gonna to go to metrics. We're actually gonna to go to this metrics tab here because we want to uh, left click over right over here to the overlay. And we wanna show the overlay because what this is going to do, if we go left click back to tracking, we can take off CPU and RAM. We don't need those because I'm more interested in just the GPU numbers here today. And so once we've taken those off, we wanna make sure we've got power consumption as well as temperatures because these are important. Power consumption, utilization, temperatures, these should all be on uh, by default, however. So you just pretty much take off those, those two there so not to distract us and then get over to overlay and then turn that overlay on. And that's essentially going to give us a live view of what we're looking at. I don't know why it bugged down quickly. <laughs> that's one of the complaints I've had uh, sometimes with um, AMD software. But, and so now after we're done with the metrics setting that up, we can go to tuning right here and we can just left click this little system arrow right here, left click the CPU because we are primarily concerned with undervolting our GPU. And it says here AMD Radeon 6700 XT. And then we wanna go over here to manual tuning and left click the custom icon. And then these are the main two settings that we're gonna play around with today is the GPU tuning and the VRAM tuning. But we'll do the VRAM tuning last because it's extremely easy. And we'll get onto the hard stuff first, the GPU tuning. Now, fan tuning, we shouldn't have to worry about this and power tuning because this is gonna do both of them for us in that it's going to bring down our temperatures and hopefully if our fans are tuned at the same levels it's going to remain quiet like it did beforehand or if it's based on temperature it's going to run even quieter than it did before and then power tuning because we're under volting manually here with the voltage tab we won't have to worry about this power tuning setting so these are the two main settings as you click on the advanced controls left click right here we now bring up the percentages in frequency and voltage. But what we're gonna do is go to the advanced controls here, and that's gonna bring up the frequencies in numbers as well as the voltages in millivolts in manual numbers, which I believe is a little bit better to go by because some graphics cards like an RX 6800 may have a lower value out of the box. So it's, it's important to understand the methodology that we're doing here today so you get the most out of whatever RX 6000 series card you have. But let's get straight into the, the settings that we're gonna be using here right after today's video sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by SCD Keys. If you guys are looking for a legitimate single end user Windows 10 or even Windows 11 Pro license key, then it's as easy as clicking the link in the description below, putting in that coupon code BFTYC, and you can get these keys for as little as $14 after that discount. And once you get the key, all you have to do is then copy it and then put it into your Windows activation, hit activate, and you should be getting rid of that annoying 
watermark in the bottom right hand corner of your screen as well as unlocking more features within windows itself so i'll put those links in the description below let's get back to the video so straight away getting into these numbers here on an rx 6700 xt i like to drop this down to 1100 millivolts straight out of the box 100 millivolts down now one thing with power consumption if we go back say we take this advanced control off here 92 percent it's going to say even though we've dropped it 8%, like it says, voltages work a lot different in that the number that you drop it by doesn't work in a linear fashion because it's multiplied by amps. And so that will give you an exorbitantly larger number the higher you go in both values. So remember that with voltages, even though we're dropping 8%, we could potentially be dropping the power consumption a lot more in raw percentage terms due to the multiplying factor on voltages. So do keep that relationship in mind. Say for instance, if we end up getting a 90% max frequency at 92% voltage, you might be thinking, Brian, we've dropped the frequency down 10%, we've only dropped the voltage down 8%. Wrong, we've actually dropped the voltage in percentage terms, the total power consumption down a lot more than that 8%. So that's one thing to keep in mind with these relationships here. And that's why I like to use the manual numbers even though it's changed it back to 1104 from 1100. So we'll get that to 1100. We drop the frequency down to, um, I like to drop it down to around 2400 megahertz. So this will work for a 6800 XT. It'll work for a 6600 XT. It'll work for a 6900 XT. I like to drop this down to 1100 millivolts and 2400 megahertz. This is about my sweet spot for undervolting these cards. It usually works most of the time we can click apply changes there but what i want to actually do is because we're using our rx 6700 xt challenger pro from asrock i'm actually going to be dropping this down a little bit more because this is the cheapest model i can find i'm guessing it's not going to be the greatest bin in that the quality of that 6700 xt on this 6700 xt graphics board is going to not be as good quality as maybe one model that costs a hundred dollars more it's the top tier 6700 xt the guys who are selling it have overclocked it out of the factory it's a good bin so basically this one i don't believe has won the silicon lottery but if you want to try and go for a lower voltage level you can perhaps drop this down to 1090 1080 and lock that in at 2400 megahertz so that's that's possible to do but what we'll do is we'll show you now what happens if it's too low, because I believe this will crash out at these levels. So we're gonna open up, we're gonna go back to the desktop right now, and we're going to open up Unigine Heaven. So we'll do a fresh open of this. And now because we're running at a 1080p monitor, I'm going to be running the resolution at 1080p. And we've got the anti-aliasing at 8x, we've got the quality to ultra, and I take off full screen because I wanna be able to alt tab if I wanna adjust things on the fly i can quickly do that if it's not in full screen mode if it's in window mode so we're opening this up now and wow okay so that that crashed right away so hopefully it didn't freeze our pc that's what we can hope for um because i'm using a capture card here okay good so that just crashed the driver out which actually means two things here uh first of all we're we're in we're unstable right so this was not the 1080 millivolts for 2400 megahertz that didn't work and that crashed out but the good thing was is that it didn't crash the whole system in other words the gpu even though it crashed it didn't catastrophically crash to the stage where it dropped out a whole system if that happens you're well off the mark from a stable uh, undervolt but in this case i would say we're relatively close because it ran for like two seconds and then it crashed if that so at least it ran basically so now we can open up our adrenaline software again and because it completely reset because that driver dropped out we now have to go back to our metrics tab left click this overlay left click overlay turn that back on because it basically reset it turned everything off but it did remember our cpu and ram were turned off so that's a good thing uh, then we go back here to left click tuning and we go down now to our custom graphics card tuning left click that right there the manual tuning and then we want to change these settings we're going to get back into our gpu tuning and we are going to go to advanced control and we're going to go to 2400 megahertz again but this time around we're going to drop it down to 1100 remember we said 1100 was pretty much that sweet spot for a lot of 
AMD RX 6000 series GPUs. So we're going to try that same, same benchmark again. And we're going to try that now with 1100 millivolts over 1080, just to show you that uh, even just 20 millivolts can be the difference between completely stable running fine and not running fine. And now we're not using, like for instance, in this system I got here today, we're using a 650 watt bronze Antec that I got for $10. So we're using a $10 power supply. We're using a, um, it's a, a B550 motherboard from ASUS. I got this second hand for $50. So we, got, we don't exactly have the best components in this build but we can definitely get one of the best undervolts in terms of seeing what our power consumption is. So this is running absolutely smooth right now. GPU power, 104 watts, uh, hovering between I'd say 102 to maybe 109. That's the area it might hover around. There is a little bit of variance here, but overall huge drop in power consumption because what I'm gonna do right now is while we're running this benchmark, again, this is why I like Unigine in heaven because it's just so robust we can actually revert this GPU now back to stock settings. And I want you to watch this GPU power up in the top right hand corner here, because this is our settings, right? 1100, 2400, 1100 millivolts. Let's go with that. We're gonna left click this, reset it, default. There we go, GPU is back to default. And what we can see here right now is you can see automatically that it's gone now to 170 watts, over 170 watts. So we went from 105, to 170, well, it's even going up now, 170 to 175. So that's over 70 watts raw power consumption just on the GPU alone. Now, if you measure that from the wall, especially with an 80 plus bronze rated power supply, and like we did in the CPU uh, undervolting tutorial, you measure both those things, even while you're gaming, you're gonna be saving over 100 watts from the wall just by doing these two things. So right here, I'm going to say, that we've kind of found a sweet spot for this GPU already in that we're running at 1100, uh, 1100 millivolts and we got the at 2400 megahertz. So that, that lies right there, a very good sweet spot for our GPU. And we see here the power consumption, we'll do it live for you guys and watch that power consumption just drop significantly. Not only that, watch the GPU junction temperature, which would AKA a lot of benchmark software call that the GPU hotspot. Watch these temperatures just drop now. So these are the benefits. This is the main benefits of undervolting. Now, another thing I like to do is left click the VRAM tuning here. And this one will go straight to max. This one will go to 107%. So we can get a overclock on our VRAM of from 2000 to 2150. So we can actually get a little bit of a boost in FPS there. And if your GPU is good enough, if they've put very good VRAM on it, you can try out the fast timing setting as well, but it doesn't work on the Challenger Pro. If I do that, the thing will crash out. So we can give our memory a boost and we can also do 1100 millivolts at 2400 megahertz. And then we can go to our profiles here and we can actually save this as AMD Undervolt. So or RX 6700. Sorry, I'm on a different keyboard than I'm used to. Excuses. <laughs> RX 6700 XT, Undervolt, and we can save that. And basically what this do, will do now is when we restart our system, it should uh, automatically as well boot up this profile when we boot up our system now. So now this is our custom profile here. We'll go over it quickly for you guys. 1100 millivolts, 2400 megahertz on our G 6700 XT. And then we go over here to our memory. We've boosted that. That's the final part. So do get your GPU tuned first before you try to tune memory. Because say for instance, if we have a GPU that doesn't go to 2150, then we could just be adding headaches if we do this straight away from the get go. Instead of tuning this, if we tune this straight away while we're tuning this, it could add in another element where we don't know where the problem lies. So I do recommend tuning your GPU first, making sure that runs, run a few benchmarks, play a few games and then tune the memory after that to get that little boost. And on this case, the 6700 XT is limited to 2150. So most 6700 XTs should be able to do these speeds. But if you've got say a 6800 XT, then the methodology is going to be very similar. If you've got a 6900 XT, drop this down to around 1100. And in some cases you can drop it down to 1090, 1080. 
drop it down to these settings and then drop down your frequencies to around 2,400 or maybe even a little bit less, 2,350. And so you should be getting off these settings a significant drop in your overall power consumption. And that's pretty much the gist of undervolting your AMD graphics card. But now we can see, let's look at power consumption versus benchmarks where I'll throw up some results here for you guys. I actually don't have a power meter to measure from the wall at this point in time. And the sad thing about that was is that I ordered one a few weeks ago, but I guess everyone's ordering power meters because the cost of power is going up. So I've actually got to wait another week to get my power meter. Anyhow, let's get over now to a conclusion and some benchmarks for you guys to show you the differences in power consumption versus performance. And so there it is with undervolting your AMD graphics card. Now, if you've got an AMD graphics card and an AMD CPU, so for instance, we have an RX 6700 XT, we've got the Ryzen 5 5500, you can actually enable what's called AMD Smart Access Memory, even on a B450, and you go to the settings here and you just enable above 4G decoding. And then after that, you'll be able to get access to smart access memory. And so this will essentially, it can give you a massive uplift in your gaming performance numbers, depending on the title. I find for a lot of uh, competitive multiplayer titles, you don't get much of an uplift, but I find it can help, especially with 0.1% uh, lows, AKA stuttering. So good setting to have on in my opinion, especially if you've just got both these uh, components and you're taking advantage of some of that value that AMD is starting to bring to the market, especially with the miners dropping off the cards, then this can be a good idea. And uh, speaking of the today's tutorial, today's a tutorial on undervolting was designed to just get people into the world of undervolting. There may be a few other things you can install, like for instance, you can install Cap Frame X as a different overlay, especially if you want to capture FPS numbers. And that's a pretty solid program. But I'm designing these tutorials just to get people into the land of undervolting where there are massive benefits to be gained. For instance, I'll pull up some performance figures for you guys where we saw, um, for instance, Five Strike Extreme we're in the 16,000 points and we're still in the 16,000 points region after this undervolt, but our power consumption has dropped significantly. And this is what you can expect across the board when you are gaming or doing productivity. Your GPU is just gonna be using a lot less power and it's gonna be a great thing. So I can't recommend this enough. But anyway, guys, with that aside, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. And also let us know in the comment section below if there's anything you would do differently. Though, uh, my previous video, if you wanna know how to undervolt the Ryzen 5 5500, for example, I'll put the link up here where I did a undervolting tutorial in the previous video. And a lot of people were critiquing me that I didn't use the Precision Boost Overdrive Curve Optimization Editor with the Ryzen CPUs. Uh, for instance, Leo Arias says, okay, Brian, by reading the comments, it's fair to say that the next tutorial video should be undervolting Ryzen CPUs with PBO. Please like this comment. And one thing I didn't explain in that video was when I undervolt, it's me uh, testing before and after. Just like if I overclock or I change various different settings, I'm always watching with my eyes A, B testing. And then I'm, if I see a difference or I notice a difference, then I will use that particular setting. So the reason I didn't explain in the previous uh, CPU tutorial with the Ryzen CPUs is why I lock in that manual or core is that I don't want that precision boost overdrive because there's actually a latency penalty that's incurred whenever the CPU dynamically shifts its speeds. And so if you take that off, you may notice that your CPU and your system feels a little bit more snappier. And so I do implore you guys to try this for yourself, do some A-B testing, come back, let me know, hey, my system feels better or it doesn't feel better. But for me, when I'm editing videos and I'm snapping between so many different things, uh, especially 4K video editing, I've noticed that in the past, that putting a manual setting on the CPUs with the AMDs uh, gives you a snappier experience. So I forgot to mention that, but again, it might be just be things that I skip over. Sometimes I don't explain myself <laughs> as, as well as I should be. But again, this is how I do things and I, how I recommend I do things. Even though if people think they're wrong, that's great, go for it. But not one person in that comment section talked about the latency penalties induced by using the other method. But some might consider that a little bit sad. I personally don't really care too much. I just keep doing what I do best here at Tech Air City. And that's just keep on, keep on and reporting that for you guys. So if you stayed this far and you're enjoying that Tech Yes content, be sure to hit that like button and also hit that sub button, ring the bell to get the videos as soon as they drop. And with that aside, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon.
Peace out for now. Bye. And it's taken me back to the start. Stick close.